There is nothing more soul crushing than going to a garden center, finding the plant that you've wanted, investing your money in it, bringing it home, investing your time into it, and it dying in front of your eyes, right? Believe me, I've been there. But at this point, I've also spent thousands of dollars on houseplants and successfully cared for them and been to probably hundreds of garden centers at this point. And I have learned four key tips that you must do before you bring houseplants home, okay? So let's get into it. Growing joy. Hey, plant friends, I'm Maria. I'm here to help you care for plants successfully and grow joy. And I am at the incredible Homestead Gardens in Maryland. Oh my gosh, this place is amazing. And I was thinking, why not, since I'm here, make a video on what I do when I'm at a garden center evaluating plants to purchase? Because believe me, I've done it wrong. I've bought the wrong plant. I've made some really big rookie mistakes when purchasing plants. So I figured, let's just outline some tips for you. So I've got four tips. Let's dive in. Tip number one is make sure that your plant doesn't have pests. Now at an amazing plant shop like Homestead Gardens, this isn't gonna be as much of an issue, but sometimes, you know, when you're at a garden center and you see a lot of plants together, there could potentially be pests that are there. Like if one plant came in with a pest infestation in a greenhouse condition, the pests could take over the entire, you know, collection of plants. So it's really important to make sure that you're not bringing a plant home that has signs of pests that could number one, make this plant very unhappy and also your plant collection at home. I've heard horror stories of people that bring a plant home into their collection, it has a pest, and the pest actually takes out their entire plant collection in addition to that plant. So the way that I do this is really simple. I'm gonna look at the top of the leaves, I'm gonna look at the plant like this, but pests tend to hide under the leaves, so I'm gonna get in there and look under the leaves, I'm gonna make sure that there's no webbing where the leaf attaches to the stem, I'm gonna look at the stem and I'm gonna make sure I don't see webbing. I don't see like white powder that could look like mealybugs. I don't see scale like brown spots. I wanna make sure that there are no pests. Now, this is my mistake because I bought them on 28th Street in New York City and I think there were plants that were sitting on the floor, but I once bought plants home that had spiders in the soil. So I would also highly recommend you taking a look at the soil to see if there's any creepy crawlies going on in here. That's only happened to me once. I've had hundreds of plants at this point, but word to the wise. And that perfectly brings us into our second tip. Tip number two, now that we've already looked at the leaves on top, we're gonna go and literally take the plant out of the pot and inspect the roots. Now, this is a little controversial. You might look a little crazy in the plant shop doing this, but you will be so happy because sometimes if you're not shopping a brand you trust in terms of a plant brand, there are sometimes people who just like stick an unrooted cutting in a pot of soil that has no roots. It's gonna be really hard for that plant to come home with you and be successful. So I'm gonna take the plant out of the pot and I'm gonna make sure that I see a healthy and robust root system already established so that when I take the plant home, I know that it's got roots that can uptake water and thrive and keep growing. This is a great example of a plant that I would bring home. You're also going to want to make sure that a plant that you bring home isn't too root bound. Now, plants that grow in the greenhouse grow really fast because they have amazing, you know, perfect lighting conditions, perfect watering conditions. This plant right here, you can see is beginning to be a little root bound. Root bound, pot bound means that the plant's roots are, uh, they have no place to go and they're starting to grow in the pattern of the bottom of the pot. If you see the pattern of the pot equals matches the, the roots. I would still bring this plant home because I know when I repot it, I could just massage the roots a little bit and repot it in a slightly larger pot and this plant would be great. And it obviously has a robust root system because it's been growing and has nowhere to go. But you wanna make sure that when you pull a plant out of the pot, it's not like half roots and half soil because that plant, if it's already so root bound, it might be more difficult for it to adjust in your home. All right, that's tip number two. Tip number three, go big or go home. Most garden centers have a terrarium section, right? You're gonna see these teensy tiny little planters and usually they're like $2.99, $3.99. They're amazing deals. The terrarium section, the teensy tiny little plant section is normally geared for putting plants in terrariums, not just bringing this home and having this plant be on its own in a pot in your house. I have made this mistake too many times. I've seen a small planter. I've been intoxicated by the idea of, oh my gosh, I could have this watermelon peperomia for only $5.99. Let me bring this home. Where if you are a beginner, 
you should be getting the biggest pot of the plant that you possibly can because the root system of this plant is so much more robust than the root system of this plant that when you bring it home, this plant has such a bigger chance of being successful and thriving in your home than this plant does. I literally just made this mistake maybe six months ago with a watermelon peperomia. I saw a little pot of it. I hadn't had this plant in a while. I brought it home. The other issue was it only had a couple of leaves. And, you know, in my normal routine, one of the leaves got knocked off. Then all of a sudden, the plant only had two leaves to photosynthesize for its entire little body, right? If I knocked one leaf off of this plant, look at all of the opportunities it still has to photosynthesize and thrive, right? If I overwater this plant once, it's dead. It's gone. If I underwater this plant once, it's dead. It's gone. This plant is going to be so much more forgiving. So if you can afford it and you are a beginner, I highly recommend going with the bigger, more robust, more established plant than the little guy. Now, I'm not hating on the little guys. You could buy multiple of these plants and pot them up in a plant. You could make a little houseplant recipe of different plants to do a cute planting. You could put them in a terrarium. There's a time and a place for these tiny, teeny, tiny pots. But if you're a beginner, it's not for you yet, okay? Tip number four, whew, this is a tough one. This is the hardest tip I'm gonna give you and it's easier said than done. Do not fall prey to desire in the garden center. We have all been there. I have made this mistake so many times. I have heard from hundreds of people in our listener community who have made this mistake hundreds of times. You go to the garden center, you see a plant, you're like, oh my gosh, I want this plant so bad. Like, this is exactly what I want. It's so incredible. I'm going to bring it home, like without Googling the name of it or without really understanding what the care for this plant is and you bring it home, and if it doesn't fit with your lifestyle, it's not going to thrive. You are setting yourself up for failure when you don't buy plants that align with your lifestyle and plant parent personality. At Homestead Gardens, they have a whole setup about my plant parent personality test. If you haven't taken it, it takes two minutes to complete online. You take it, it's free, you get your plant parent personality and a list of plants that are perfectly curated for your personality. Because listen, this fern could be an amazing selection for a mindful plant parent, someone who interacts with their plants on a daily basis, someone who's gonna be mindful, who might have a humidifier for their plants and who is not gonna let the plant dry out. But if you're a low maintenance plant parent, a different plant parent personality profile, and you bring a fern home and you go two weeks without watering it because you're traveling or you're chasing little kids around or, you know, you've got other stuff in your life going on, which no judgment, this fern is going to die and then you're going to think you're a fern killer. But if you had just brought home this monstera, which is a perfect plant for a low maintenance plant parent, this could go two weeks without getting watered. This would maybe wilt, but it would certainly not die, right? So it's all about setting yourself up for success by buying the right plants for your personality. And you need to go into the garden center with the personality in mind, with the types of plants that thrive in your home. You need to understand your lighting environment and you need to understand your plant parent personality so you can just make the right choice to set yourself up for success so you can grow joy, plant friend. It's really that simple. Check for pests check the roots. This plant is dying to be potted up with, we've got uh, the roots growing out of the bottom of the pot. Go for bigger when you can, if you can afford it and know your plant parent personality. If you get confused on what plants, I literally will email you a list of plants that were perfect for your personality. All you have to do is take the personality results into the garden center and say, hey, what on this list do you have? I make it very simple for you. And bonus, I know I said four tips, but I'm going to give you one more tip. It's not just about plant shopping, plant friends. It's about bringing home all of the things that your plants need to thrive. So if you're a beginner plant parent, I would highly recommend making sure that you're also going home with the right potting mix, the right pot with drainage holes in it, fertilizer for the plant, right? So when the time comes, you have it ready and you can start treating the plant. You can pot it up in organic, high quality soil. You can make sure it has a pot with the drainage holes. So if you're new to watering, you're able to kind of monitor it. Set yourself up for success. Let me know if I missed any tips. Do you have any tips that I missed or that you find really work well for you when you're shopping? Do you have any plant shops that you love and recommend shopping in? Let me know in the comments. Like, subscribe, do all the things. Tell the YouTube gods that we're making good content for you. And I hope this episode helps you keep growing joy.